past four weeks we've been hearing a lot of information about a new disease which is striking ash trees across Britain called Calara fraxinea. Today we're going to be joined by Malcolm Allen who's the site manager for the Woodland Trust southwest of England. Let's go and see what he's got to say about this. So we're in Hardwick Wood on the outskirts of Plymouth. Malcolm, I believe this uh, forest has quite a lot of meaning for you. Well, I've worked for the Woodland Trust for 16 years um, and I've managed this wood for all of that period of time. So I've seen quite a lot of changes. Could you tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the ash trees of this forest then? Okay, well, the, the ash trees here um, are, are sort of part of an ongoing sort of history. Um, the, the woodland here is designated as, as ancient, so it's been here continuously wooded for, for 400 years. Um, the trees here aren't that old, but you know, there's been that continuity of woodland and ash form quite a substantial part of that. Uh, in the wood, we, we've got large mature trees around us that you, you'll see, um, but also sort of younger trees. Now, to, for those people who don't um, readily know what an ash tree is like, one of the easiest ways to recognize it is actually the, the very characteristic compound leaf. Mm. Um, it has a long sort of central stem and then small leaflets that, that come off it with a single one at the end so that's that's one of the easiest ways and at this time of the year now with autumn setting in and, and winter on its way the leaves will drop but the other very characteristic thing is this sort of greeny gray bark that you get and then these very black buds um, especially on the uh, on, on the tips of the twigs and we've got uh, got a mature that we can have a look at um, and, and, and this is it, that's sort of a very nice sort of, um, you know, sort of grey green, um, you know, sort of coloration of the bark, but with this sort of fine texturing and, and fissuring within. As the tree grows, the, the outer bark sort of doesn't expand at the same mm. uh, rate as the tree and uh, it, it, it sort of forms these cracks. Ash grows very quickly. I mean, it, 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 it is not a long, uh, it's not a highly durable timber, but what it has is a great deal of sort of strength and, and flexibility. The ash tree is, is probably used for things, like I said, for tool handles. Um, hockey sticks were historically sort of made from uh, ash and, and yep. sort of um, you know carbon fiber and that sort of thing uh, it came in uh, the mosquito the, the you know the famous sort of um, plane from the second world war uh, yes. that, that was built and, and also the morgan cars uh, the the carcass for them was historically built of, of ash so you know something that's light um, very sort of strong uh, and, and sort of flexible brilliant so we haven't actually talked much about uh, Kalara yet um, can you tell me a little bit about how it actually starts and how it affects the tree? Well, we believe that it's a, a wind-borne disease mm -hmm. in, in that the spores are or sort of transported probably on, on the wind. And what happens is that they then land on the leaves of the trees. Mm. Um, start to infect those, cause sort of die back of the leaves and slowly travel back down through the stems into the branches. Mm. And, and that is where you then start to get the characteristic lesions. And, and where the small twigs join onto the larger branches, you tend to get a very diamond shaped lesion above and below. And, and that's an indication of where the fungus is beginning to spread into, into the larger branch wood, both up and down. And so what you find then is that the, the leaves on those branches will die they will hang down in a very sort of you know lo looking like a black soggy mess mm. uh, very again very characteristic um, and on young trees they will they will sort of maintain that wilt and, and look so the, the trees will look very sick mm. um, on larger trees like this then what you'll find is that gradually the the, the smaller branches around the, the top and in the crown begin to die back and so you will find that there will be like a, a collection of dead branches in the top of the tree Wow and what percentage of um, trees in this woodland are actually ash? Probably 30% of the trees in this wood are ash. So right. if, if they were to die, then you know, it would change the, you know, the, the, the appearance mm. of this woodland quite drastically. The, the ash leaves come out sort of quite late and they die back sort of quite early in yeah. comparison with other species. They, they have a, a major role in maintaining the light levels here. They may well be sort of quite important for things like the bluebells that, that we get in the spring. And, and if other species come in that, that cast a darker shade, then you know, the, 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 the flora here on the ground could change quite mm. dramatically. So we are in the uh, first week of November. I believe the amount of sightings has now nearly doubled to 82. 
um, what do you think is the probability of uh, finding a cure for this? The, the government um, are, are sort of putting quite a lot of resources into, into research at the moment and, and we're hoping that, that something will be uh, found. Whether we'll be able to cure uh, the disease, I, I think that's very unlikely. Um, but um, hopefully we can sort of put some processes into place where we can start to, you know, control the, the, the source. So it's quite um, a serious problem really that we're facing. Um, I'm, I'm really concerned about it. What, what's your um, advice to people in Britain then about how they can maybe you know, help to reduce the spread or uh, you know, make, make a difference in some way? Uh, I, I think we, we all have to accept some responsibility for the way we move forward on this one now. We have to make sure, I think, from now on that if we go for a walk in the woods, we clean our boots. We, we make sure that uh, we don't carry any potentially infected material from one woodland to another um, or dare I say actually back into people's gardens with some diseases. Yeah. Um, you know, don't pick up logs and bits of wood, um, you know, don't take cuttings from gardens and, and places that you might go and visit. Or, or, no, no matter how tempting it is, there is the possibility that those sorts of things can carry infection from one place to another and they're untraceable. Mm. Um, you know, buying trees from somewhere, you probably know where you've got them from and there will be some sort of paper chain uh, that you can follow. But actually, people moving around the countryside like that, carrying an infection with them, we, we cannot trace that. Mm. What people can do is there's, there's a lot of guidance being produced now. Mm. So um, if, if they have any concerns whatsoever, then, then the, probably the best thing they can do is to have a, have a look at the Forestry Commission's website or they can visit uh, Ferrer's website and that, that's the Food and Environment Research Agency. Mm. They're, they're um, uh, you know, heavy into, into the research for the disease as well. Or they can actually come to the Woodland Trust website mm. um, and we, there, there will be guidance there and there will be links where they can actually find photographs and information to, to help them uh, not necessarily diagnose but sort of confirm the, the symptoms that they are looking at are worth reporting. Well, Malcolm, thank you very much for having us at Hardwick Wood. Uh, let's hope that it doesn't spread to the southwest, hey? Well, that's right. I mean, we, it, it, it will be a devastation to, to lose all our ash trees. So let's hope that uh, there, there is a solution and uh, we can get on top of it really quickly. Yeah.